Hello, you are watching It All Starts With A Dream talk show, and I'm your host, Alika Karpova. As always, topic of our program is dreams. In our show, we prove that dreams come true. Action is needed in order to succeed, but most dreams are reachable. Here, entrepreneurs and professionals talk about their dreams, share their life experiences, incredible stories and secrets of success. You can watch the previous episodes of our show at itallstartswithadream.net. Today, we will talk about two great professions related to children, kindergarten teacher and principal of the school. My mother spent 35 years teaching kindergarten and first grade in Russia, and she taught me a lot how to interact with children of young age. It is hard work to be a kindergarten teacher, but also interesting and rewarding in a way. We will learn more about it from our guests, Samantha Elliott, kindergarten teacher, Rosemary Elementary School, Campbell District. Mm -hmm. Hi, how are you? And Brian Schmeidek, principal of Rosemary Elementary School, Campbell District. Hi, it's great to be here. Brian won the principal of the year in Santa Clara County last year. Award was given by Association of California School Administrators. Also, in the studio, I have my helpers today. Kristina Karevsky karpova our little star, <laughs> Rosemary Elementary School, Kindergarten. Hello, how are you? And Sofia Yatka, our young generation, Westmont High School. Hello. <laughs> Brian, Samantha, we have a tradition here. Kristina usually starts the interview. She prepared a wonderful question for you. Kristina, go ahead, honey, ask your question. What was the childhood dream? Brian, <laughs> go ahead, start. <laughs> Well, that's a great question, Christina. I, I, my childhood dream was to be like my dad, and my dad was a realtor, and he sold people houses, and so I just uh, always thought he, he was, he played such an important role for so many families. He would take them around looking at different places and showing them just all the places trying to find just the right house for them, and so it was something that I thought, wow, what a great way to serve people and help people, and I really thought I was going to be a, a great realtor someday. <laughs> that was my dream. Is it related somehow in what you do right now, a little bit? Oh, very much, very much. My, my work is about service, right? And uh, realtors are also serving the people that they work for and that they're working for to find a home. And so my job, it's all about supporting teachers, supporting parents, supporting the children. And it, it, so it's, all, it's very much a service job. And so it's real closely tied to what my dream was as a, as a young boy. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Samantha? Um, when I was younger, I wanted to be an artist or a chef. And I just loved taking bits and pieces and creating things, whether it was with food, with random things from my refrigerator, in the kitchen, or art. I did a lot of painting, um, sculpture, collaging, and that still continued to this day. Um, and I feel like I still get to do that a lot, you know, in kindergarten, so it's great. <laughs> so you do different projects with your children in class? Definitely, yeah. We do a lot of art projects, we do cooking projects, and really kindergarten is about putting all those pieces together, whether art or cooking or math or learning a new language and putting it all together and having fun with it. So I feel lucky that I get to do what I love, which is, you know, creating things and helping students learn. And In the next question, we will talk a little bit more about that because actually the next question is like, what was the favorite things to do in the childhood for you, Samantha? Um, like I said, art was definitely my favorite thing to do. Um, I lived, grew up in Santa Cruz, so we lived really close to the beach. So if I wasn't creating art um, in my backyard, I was usually at the beach or playing with my dog. Um, going on lots of hiking and biking with my family. So was that. being outdoors and creating art was definitely my favorite parts of growing up. <laughs> okay, what about you, Brian? Oh, sports. I just loved playing sports. I had two brothers and a sister. We were all very close in age and a lot of neighbors, uh, a lot of kids in the neighborhood. And we <coughs> had a big field we'd all play f uh, football in and uh, play baseball there. And my parents put up a basketball court for us so we'd play there. and just every day, baseball, basketball, or football, all year, all year round. So we just really loved it. So we got old enough to play on, actually play on teams, and then we continued to do it through the schools. And so, big part of our lives growing up. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Oregon, in Eugene, Oregon. And so- Did you have a big family? Uh, uh, there were two, I have two brothers, an older brother, and then a younger sister and a younger brother. But all four of us are within, uh, within five and a half years. And so my mom, at one point, had, had uh, 
four, four children and the oldest was four and a half or five years old. So uh, they were, were all very close in age. Was it a small city or town? It was like a was city of about, um, about 100,000 people in Oregon, and, but it, we lived right on the city limits. And so behind our house, it was all fields and forests, and, and we lived in a neighborhood, but beyond us, there was you know, big creeks and big fields, and so we spent lots of time playing out in the, in the woods and in the fields and turning over rocks and looking for lizards and snakes and, <laughs> and playing in the creek, looking for salamanders and frogs. And so it was a, it was a great place to grow up. A lot, of, a lot of places to ride our bikes and uh, a lot of places just to adventure. And, and freedom to run and Freedom to run, distance. exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, were your parents teachers? <laughs> well, my, as I said, my dad's a realtor, but he did teach for the National Association of Realtors, and so he traveled around the country teaching. So he, he sees himself in many ways as a teacher. My mom was a, was a registered nurse, and so she worked in surgery uh, as a profession. So she worked in the hospital and assisted the doctors in surgery. So, uh, but they were certainly my first teachers. What my about parents. some other realtors? Um, teachers? I no. had no, none of their, none of my uncles or aunts in my immediate family were teachers, no. no. Not, not what about you, Samantha? Uh, my grandma was a teacher. She taught um, at the elementary school level for many years down in Southern California. And she, then she got her PhD and she did taught some English as well um, at the college level at um, California University Fullerton. So, so she influenced your decision definitely. to become a teacher? Yeah, she was very artistic and musical and was very, you know, she inspired me to be a teacher in many ways, I believe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How it happened with you that you became principal? Finally? Oh, my path to teaching was a little, uh, a little accidental in some ways. I, I was married in uh, 95, 1995 and in 1996 the state of California changed the laws and wanted to have 20 students per classroom in kindergarten through third grade and so there was a great need for teachers at that time because before that there were 30 or more students in a class and so I had been working for Hope Rehabilitation supporting uh, developmentally disabled adults at the time and my wife who's the best teacher I know who uh, I really admired as a kindergarten teacher herself for years um, talked to me into going to a job fair and so I went there and because I'm fluent in Spanish th at the time there was a great need for Spanish speaking teachers and was offered a position and and quickly after becoming a teacher, I spent the years teaching first grade and fifth grade and then started studying to get my master's degree so I could be an administrator. Nice. We will talk about degree a little bit later, but Sophia has two questions for you as well. So, Sophia. Um, since I'm a high school student, I have a question. What did you think of who you want to become when you were in high school? <coughs> well, when I was in high school, I, again, was really into art and I was the editor of my high school's newspaper and there was a brief moment I thought I might want to go into um, you know, publishing or working at a newspaper or journalism. So when I started college, that was kind of what I had in my mind, was either art or journalism. But I quickly went off to doing art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I think I was at that time still thinking of following my dad's footsteps <laughs> into his business. But I did also have a real love for writing. I, I, in um, elementary school and middle school, I really started to love writing. And so I th thought of myself as someone who would eventually be a writer and maybe writing books. But um, so at that point, I was a, I, but it's still my, I think my main profession cho of choice at that time was to follow my dad into his business. Also, how, how does it feel to deal with children? How does it feel to work with children? Um. How does it feel? I, I mean, every day feels great. I love my job. Um, I mean, it has its ups and downs, but you know, seeing a kid smile because of something you're doing or because you help them learn something or you help them feel better, it's just you know, really heartwarming feeling. It's, you know, it makes you feel good. And so I've always enjoyed working with children because it's just so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think working with children is a privilege and it's a real gift that we have a chance to dedicate our lives as professional educators to working with kids and, and supporting them and as Samantha's saying just to, to finding ways to connect with students and motivate students and help them kind of become what they dream of being. I think it's really, it's really is a privilege and it's, it's hard work and it's a challenge every day but it's uh, certainly um, 
it's a great honor to get a chance to do that professionally. You mentioned that it's a challenge. What's the biggest challenge, actually, to work with children, Brian? I think um, helping children understand um, sort of the growth mindset, understand the sense that they can, um, through hard work, uh, change the direction and the possibilities for their own life. That they aren't just born with a brain that's, that's set in stone and it's not going to change, but they, with, with hard work and persistence and a commitment, they can learn anything that they want to do and they can fulfill whatever their dream is. And I think that's difficult because I think a lot of our um, understanding as a society is that uh, we're kind of set and maybe I'm good at math and maybe I'm not, but there's not much I can do about it. But the research shows now that the brain is elastic and can change with the right inputs and the right, the right, um, the right commitment for, by the individual. So. Interesting. Samantha, what do you think? Um, I would think it's knowing all my students are different they learn differently, they come from different backgrounds, and I worry every day how I'm going to best meet their needs. And so I have 24 students, so every day it's, you know, what can I do for each of them? And sometimes, you know, that takes a lot of work, but it's also what I enjoy most about it, that every day is different and that every child is different and I'm just helping them with what they need and doing my best to do that. But can definitely be a challenge thinking about what 24 people need every single day. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yeah>. <laughs> can, you can you tell about your degrees, basically just kind of formal question, your degree? Yeah, so again, uh, thinking I was going into business, I got a business management um, a bachelor's from the University of Oregon. Mm -hmm. And then after that, when I got into teaching, I got my teaching credential from National Hispanic University in East San Jose, and then my master's degree from San Jose State in uh, school administration. Okay, thank you. And Samantha? Um, I graduated from San Jose State um, with a degree in studio art, thinking I would become an art teacher, mm -hmm. but then I decided to, you know, you know, have a little more broader options, so I got my teaching credential through Cal State Teach uh, through um, Monterey Bay, and then Currently, I just began my first semester um, in grad school at um, CSU f uh, Fresno, so getting my mm -hmm. master's in teaching. Yeah. While being a student in your universities, do you have like some interesting memories of your student life that you can share, something that comes to your mind? <laughs> um, in oh, that's a hard question. I mean, I have a lot of memories from school. I think. For me, it's studying abroad in Europe, mm. um, being an art major, um, being, being able to create art all day and then go visit all these amazing famous museums in London. And I spent some time in Prague and Berlin um, and Vienna and just being able to go to all these museums and actually see in person all the artwork from my textbooks and then get to see it in person was one of my most favorite experiences from my college career. <laughs> Wonderful, so you've had a chance to travel. Yes, while being <coughs> I recommend school. that for all students is, you know, study abroad somewhere that, you know, inspires you, whatever field you're in. And that was a dream of mine to always be able to travel to London especially, and I got to do that, so great. that was, it was great. Great, and <laughs> you, Brian? Yeah, I, I had great experiences in college. I found high school, middle school, and high school to be real difficult, and just socially managing that. and. And so when I got to college and lived in the dorms and started to build friends and connections with people that I had no knowledge of or didn't know at all before, uh, it just gave me great confidence um, and just gave me a sense of wow, I can do whatever I want. I can sort of shape my own life. And I think that was one of my great memories of, of college was just that sense of, of um, freedom to kind of become who I wanted to be, not kind of just living off of all of my past, everything that, everything that brought me to that point. And so that was exciting and, and real fun for me to try new things and experiment a little bit. Great. With I know that you have such a great tradition in your school, like morning lunch. Can you tell a little bit about that? Certainly. At, at Rosemary, we have a, um, a daily as morning assembly, and we call it our morning lunch. We're the Rosemary Rockets, so we call it our morning lunch. And it's a chance for all of our students. So we have 510 students, so all of our students come together at the very beginning of the day and stand in sort of a semicircle around an area where myself and a student or two students help me with uh, just kind of a motivational beginning to the day. And so we do the Pledge of Allegiance and we do a little chant about our, our behavior expectations of be responsible and be respectful and be caring at our school. 
and then we have some exercises and it might be a song or it might be a, a little dance or uh, just some exercises and then we follow that with just a two minute talk uh, that I give tied to some theme. It might be persistence or it might be never giving, never giving up I guess which is persistence or it might be looking for difficult work or, or honoring mistakes or all the different things that go into sort of developing the growth mindset that we talked about before. Then we recognize a few students for things that they've done for maybe behavioral things or attendance and then we're done. It's the whole event lasts seven minutes and we're done and, and students are off to their classrooms and, and even though it takes a little bit of instructional time out of our day, it creates a, a school-wide language and so we're all talking the same language when it comes to what our expectations are at, at Rosemary. Great. Samantha, how many years of teaching experience do you have? Um, this is my third year teaching kindergarten. Um, prior to that though, I taught for many years while I was in college. I mostly taught after school and during the summer. I directed an art and science camp in Santa Cruz for many years, and I taught most of the art curriculum there. And then after school programs, I did a lot of art as well. So I would include that in my teaching years. So if I included that, it would be like 15 years of teaching in different capacities. So teaching <laughs> kindergarten, what do you enjoy the most? Um, I think it's the, I like the curriculum. I think it's fun. I think I love teaching kids how to read. And I think I'd always want to teach maybe kindergarten or first grade because I love helping to establish those foundational skills in reading. Um, and just their personality. They're so excited to learn. And they just have the funniest things they say. And, you know, it, it makes me excited to go to work every day, you know, getting to spend time with them. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. Let's talk about your poor parents, how they were supportive in your path, in your career, in your life, basically. Brian, can you talk about your parents? Yeah, so my parents were clearly my first teachers. I mean, they, they shaped me in so many ways. My dad was an extremely hard worker and really taught me the, the idea of delayed gratification of first I do what I have to do, then I do what I want to do, that I really need to commit um, fully to uh, uh, to doing the hard things first and I talked to the kids about that I talked to the kids about eating my peas first and <laughs> how I would have to if I was gonna get dessert at a meal I had to clean my plate and the hardest thing for me to eat was the vegetables so I'd always eat my peas first just because I get that out of the way and the rest of the meal was easy my parents taught me a lot about delayed gratification and hard work um, uh, my mom really was uh, was very conscious of the fact that hard work can change your life and if you work hard you can do whatever you want to do but you have to be committed to doing the work and so she would always remind us and really build us up and say you can do that you can do that they were, no, nothing was beyond what um, beyond f she believed in us a lot more than we believed in ourselves I guess and so that was really a powerful thing so to have a dad that just sort of talked about hard work and my mom just about and about sort of doing the hard things first and my mom kind of always pushing and saying yes you can giving us confidence so those are real big messages and and the other message that I always share with the kids every day that sort of the secret